In the next 10 minutes of the online lessons, we will discuss about the strength of magnetic field. The three areas of focus at the fundamental level will be firstly what driven the magnetic field, how to determine its directions, and finally to understand how does the magnetic field actually S up when there are more than one such magnetic field present. Magnetic field are driven by current which is flowing in the conductor. So whenever there's a current flow, the magnetic field will actually set up around it. Like you can see, these are the magnetic field as the current actually flowing in the upwards directions along the wire. The larger the current, the stronger the magnetic field around it. In other words, the strength of the magnetic field setup is actually proportional to the current itself. Here are the various formula we can use to calculate the strength of magnetic field. Long straight wire conductor, flat circular coin, or the solenoid. However, we will not go into the detail on using this formula in this lesson. Point to note will be to observe the proportional relationships between the magnetic field strength and the current. It is consistent with what you mentioned earlier that the stronger the current, the stronger the magnetic field strength, i.e. they are actually proportional. However, the current and magnetic field relation is a one way. When there's a magnetic field, there may not be a current flow. But when there's a current flow, there will always be a magnetic field that actually set up around it. To determine the directions of the magnetic field due to the current flow through a conductor, we can actually use the right hand grip rule where our thumb will actually be pointing in the directions of the current flow and then the forefinger wrapped around the wire will actually be pointing in the directions of the magnetic field that actually set up around it. The rule is actually quite flexible. Sometimes the wire is not straight, like in the case of the solenoid. We can interchange the rule, letting the forefinger be the current. So our forefinger will actually wrap around, pointing in the directions of where the current is actually flowing. Naturally, the thumb will be pointing in the north and in this manner. So north pole is actually here. Now let's play around with the right hand grip rule. For instance, if you were interested to find out the directions of the magnetic field, at this point that I actually cross out, how we actually um, do it. Now, we will focus on this sections of the wire. This sections of the wire is almost straight. So in this instance, we will let the thumb be pointing in the directions of the current. We will actually sort the rule around, thumb pointing up, and the forefinger will actually be pointing into the page okay, in this region. So the magnetic field is actually into the page at the point that I actually cross out. Now let's look at more example. Supposedly there is a current at this location flowing out of the page. Now how do we determine using right hand grid rule the directions of the magnetic field at position A which is about some distance away from where the current is actually flowing since we know that the current that is actually flowing around the wire should be circular in nature, so we will actually draw a circular ring, extend it to where the position A would be. Now, the directions of the magnetic field, again, right hand grip rule, will be in this anti clockwise manner. Now, at point A, the magnetic field will be a tangential, it should be a tangential to where the fuel lines is actually flowing. So the magnetic field directions at point A is actually pointing downwards. Now, we can try this again to determine the directions of the magnetic field at location B. Same thing, we will actually draw a circular ring that is big enough that, that can actually extend all the way to where point B should be, something like, like this. So let's say point B is at this um, point. Now the magnetic field again is going to be in the same anti-clockwise directions. We will draw a tangential line 
to point B, the tangential line to where the circle ring will be. Now, this tangential line will actually be indicating the directions of the magnetic field line at point B. Now, we look at another example. This time around with current flowing into the page, a straight wire conductor that actually has a current flowing into the page. Now, to determine the directions of the magnetic field at point A, step one, we will draw a circular ring going through point A. Step two, right hand grip rule, the magnetic field will be pointing in the anti clockwise directions along this dotted K path. Now, step three, a tangential line at A that is in the same directions as where the magnetic field will be going around the ring. So the directions of the magnetic field at A will be pointing to the left. Now we look at another point, point B. What is the directions of the magnetic field at point B? So same thing, we will begin with the first step, drawing a circular ring that actually big enough to go through point B. Using our right hand grip rule, the thumb will be pointing in the directions of the current that is actually into the page. Fourth finger will actually go around the wire and that means that the magnetic field will be also in the anti-clockwise directions. Now, step three, a tangential line okay, at point B. Now, this will be the directions of the magnetic field at point B. In the last sections of the video, we look at the vector sum of magnetic field when there's more than one field present. Let's recall the magnetic field strength is measured in Tesla and that the magnetic field since it is a vector, so 3 Tesla but plus 2 Tesla may not be equal to 5. This is unless it is a scalar sum or if the magnetic field vectors okay, are pointing in the same directions. So to illustrate this concept of vector sum, we look at a very basic example, 3. Now, there's 15 Tesla going in the upward directions and 15 Tesla going in the rightward directions. Now, how do we actually sum up this two magnetic field? Okay. Now, since they are perpendicular to each other, we can actually use the Pythagoras theorem. So the resultant B field can be equals to the square root of 15 square plus 15. This is a very basic Pythagoras theorem. And the end result, you will actually give us 21.2 Tesla pointing in, in this direction that's actually shown. Now, vector, there should be a magnitude. And of course, the direction is also very important. Since this is 15 by 15, we can actually get this angle theta. So angle theta can be equal to tangent inverse the opposite component which is 15 then the adjacent component so this angle theta is actually 45 degree so the final answer will be 21.2 tesla pointing at 45 degree above the horizontal so this is how we do a vector sum of a very simple example when the magnetic field is not pointing in, in the same directions Now here's the last example to illustrate the vector sum of magnetic field strength. So we have a wire one that is actually carrying a current out of the page at the position that is actually drawn. Right next to it, there's actually um, wire two also carrying a current in the same direction that is actually um, out of the page. Point B is directly below wire one, and the directions okay, of the or the strength of the magnetic field due to wire 1 at point B is actually um, 10 Tesla, due to wire 2 is actually 5 Tesla. So how do we find the directions of the resultant view at point B? Now, same thing, first step, we will draw a circular ring. Okay. Now using right hand grid rule, we will know that the directions of the magnetic field set up due to the current flowing in wire 1 is actually in the anti-clockwise directions. Then we will draw a tangential line to where point B is, a tangential line to the circular ring that you see it over here. Now, this direction is actually to the right, the tangential direction. So which means that this 10 Tesla 
due to wire 1 is actually to the right so let's write in 10 tesla to the right due to wire 1 now we do the same for wire 2 draw a circular ring to where point b would be followed by a tangential line which is in this directions now the current is also in the same direction so the magnetic field will be also in the anti-clockwise this explains why the tangential line is actually this directions now because you're looking at phi tesla so this vector line is actually slightly shorter or half the length so let's try to in this is about phi tesla now to do the vector sum of this we can actually extend this thing over here join from here to here so the vector sum of the 10 and the 5 tesla should be somewhat in this directions okay so this is a very simple example to illustrate the vector sum of the magnetic field so with all that we come to the end of this lessons and thank you so much for the past 10 minutes